We are Vineyard. I remember Fran loved saying to me, she said, you know, the longer I follow Jesus, the more I find that there's more and more questions, but also more and more assurance. That was yeah, it. That was the, the lifeline. That was the lifeline, right? Yeah. That was the lifesaver. And I'm like, if I can hold on to that, and it really was. And I loved her choice of that word, assurance. Yeah. Not certainty, right? Certainty is something you right. have in yourself. Someone has to give you assurance, yes. right? It's relational. And that's great because actually, you know what else is relational? A question. Actually, these questions I was asking, as long as I was asking them of Jesus, asking yes. them of God, that wasn't taking me out of of, again, another great evangelical ideal. Right. Relationship with Jesus. Yes. Personal, and I think also social and collective, yeah, 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 but yeah, also yeah, personal right. relationship yes, with yes, Jesus. Yes. As long as you take your question and you and you point mm. it in that direction, mm. again, God's not afraid. And anyway, it's yeah. just really that sort of like, okay, then my certainty, I might find certainty after certainty <laughs> sort of falling down like dominoes. Yeah. But, but the, if the questions themselves are giving opportunity for Jesus to respond, for the Spirit to respond, mm-hmm. and the Father to respond with assurance that I need, yeah. well, that's actually only taking me deeper into this life with God, not out of it. Welcome to the We Are Vineyard podcast, conversations to help us grow with Jesus and each other. In today's episode, Jay talks with Matt Crosman. In addition to serving as a pastor at Elm City Vineyard, Matt is an associate research scholar and director of the Life Worth Living program at Yale Center for Faith and Culture at Yale Divinity School and a lecturer of humanities at Yale University. Let's listen in. Well, Matt, thanks for doing our podcast. Absolutely, Jake. That's how I start every time. Dude, I'm excited. And it's always a little awkward because we've been talking before this, but then I need to have a clean Mm -hmm. start. So I start with, thanks for joining us for our podcast. Yeah, people don't know. (laughs) You're going to do a behind the music (laughs) someday. They can sense it, I think. Mm -hmm. They're like, that started awkwardly, but it's because we've already been talking. But anyway, so you've listened to this a bit, so you've heard a bit of the story Yeah. um, and how we do it. I would just, let's just jump in because we've known each other a decent amount of time. Yep. Tell me where you were born and grew up. So those are two different things, actually. Oh. I was uh, born in Pasadena, California. Mm. Lived there a, a really important two and a half years of my life. Two and a half, yeah. I, yeah, I like, you're like. It's it really formative. Clear definition. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, no, so that's like a thing I sometimes forget. When right. You'll, you'll like be going through like passport control or something. Yes. And be like, yes. So where were you born? I'll be like, Glenview, Illinois. And they'll be like. That is not what That's, it says. You are a liar, sir. <laughs> it's like, I have a few other questions for you. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, exactly. dang it. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, so I was born in Pasadena, but grew up um, on the North Shore of Chicago. Oh. So if people know like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Mean Girls. How could you not know those that? Those are parodies. <laughs> of your life. Certainly, of, of like, of a certain, you know, yes. of a certain. Where, what kind of part piece. specifically? Glenview. So, um, oh, yeah. So that's like, uh, Northwest of Evanston. My mom yeah. was my mom was doing her PhD at Northwestern. Okay, um, and then eventually was teaching there. And my my dad was working for Kraft Foods. Oh, making the cheese fat free. Honest, you know, and the ice cream. Kraft Foods was ba- is based in Glenview, Illinois, and that's Velveeta. It's Velveeta Kraft, yeah, man. Velveeta, <laughs> dude, man. I I I could anyway. <laughs> this was a this was a part of my childhood. Was it? it? Was like yeah yeah yeah. What was a company product and what was not? Oh yeah yeah. Like certain salad dressings because it was sort of like traitorous and it was a little bit of like a loyalty thing. Really, a little bit like a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Like in a little bit of a like. Uh, That's great. I don't know. This is like what Dad did. So like, why right. didn't you want to like contribute? Or, you know, like, be, like, in the fold. I uh, Sure. Listen. Yeah. Seal I, test ice cream, Briar's ice cream. It's like My Amway. dad was working on yeah, fat-free you, ice cream or, like, reduced fat ice cream. Uh, like, that was sweet. Because then eventually he'd, like, start, like, bringing home to, samples. You get to have some. Oh, dude. And then he'd come home, like, white cartons. But what, when you say working on, so now you're talking about design. So he's oh, yeah, actually yeah. doing it. He's not, like, in the sales, the manufacturing. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was born in Pasadena because my dad was doing a PhD at Caltech. Oh. Which might make you think a little bit about our food system. Right. Because you need to do, do like a PhD in physical <laughs> chemistry in order to contribute to the modern production of food. Um, so that was, you know, that was the so, thing. He did nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. And when he, so it's like a, a way of um, modeling like the shapes of molecules at wow. like very, very, very small scales. Um, and when he finished, it was like Caltech 
I think there was like maybe one other university that had an NMR spectrometer. Spec- spectrometer. Hmm. I don't wow. Know. I'm not a chemist. No. Um, and like, it was like there and then like the factory where they were built and like craft foods. Like these were the only people who had like this level of technology. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Yeah. So he's... So, I mean, the, the, I really am interested. This is really right crucial now. to my story. It is. It is to me. So, <laughs> so, so wait a minute. So he is effectively chemically manufacturing food. All right. So as it turns out, do you want to know? Do you want to know? All right. As it turns out. I really do. Um, you know, uh, most, most of taste you will know is smell. Actually. Yes. And smell, the olfactory system yeah. is actually like a chemical system. Yes. Like it's actually like fits of molecules yes. in food into, receptors, into right. you know receptors right. in your nose okay yep. well it turns out those molecules flavor molecules right. essentially yep. um don't actually attach directly to food what they do is they attach to mm. fat the fat in food doesn't taste like anything right but most of the flavor is attaches that, to the fat which is why we like fatty tasting right. things yeah. so when you remove the fat ah. you literally you have like a chemical problem of like how do i right. like, i need to find like a, a a place to hook this molecule onto right. this food. Totally. Does that make sense? Yes. That's as far as I know, understand. And it. so that's what he was doing. That's like, what he was doing. Let's he was like figuring out what is the shape of this thing and this, then what else, once we take the fat out of the potato chip, where else would you put it or whatever? Right. Yeah. So it's, so like something like Velveeta, mm-hmm. t- it's a cheese food. Yeah. My dad was, my dad was always pretty clear that he was not involved in Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that wait, was important. To wait, him. before we keep talking, <laughs> let's be clear about this one thing. He, he in my was, recollection, in my was, recollection, he was not a part of. You okay, know, bad example. Company but, products, but right? Yeah, okay, you know, fair enough. Yeah, so you'd have it, but I, limits. I didn't do. It. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's a pretty niche thing. That's why it's so interesting. It was a to pretty me. niche thing. Man. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was. I would go to my. I'd go to like you know take your kid to work day, and I would like go to the lab. And like, dude, that's so cool. Anything metal, you'd have to leave at the door because there were these like enormous magnets on these. Right. Like, but when you said, were... okay, when you say craft, what I immediately <laughs> think are things like marketing. sales, yeah, marketing, marketing yeah, sure, sure. even like research, like, hey, we do the taste thing with mm-hmm, a certain mm-hmm, amount of people. Mm-hmm. But he's like oh, in no. the lab. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's doing so serious, cool. basic research. That is so cool. I, no, it is. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's cool. I yeah. mean, my, but, but you, you know, my dad was in all kinds of research as well. Okay. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, fun sure, to sure, me sure. to think yep. like, how do people do that? And, yeah. and then how do you make the, the numbers work? I mean, cause this costs a certain amount of whatever, yep. and it yep. does all this, yep. the research costs a certain amount of money and yep. how do you price the products so you can keep yep. building products. And anyway, that's fun. That's yeah. okay. And it's how I ended up growing up in Glenview, Illinois. Right. And go. he's like, so he's like, scientist yeah extraordinaire yeah and then your mom uh speech pathology and learning disabilities huh. so she really worked a lot with with kids that had either you know difficulties with speech um mm. or, or or learning disabilities of, of, of various sorts wow. um and she for a while did that through sort of like running some sort of practicums at huh. the university and then eventually went into private practice working with mm. working with kids clients one-on-one and then Actually, she ended up in ministry mm. as her sort of third career or something like that wow. um, in, in children's ministry. Because she's like, you know what? Yeah. Maybe actually it was always about the kids. From all that stuff you she know? learned. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have that, but then is faith, life with God, like a central part of what you're doing? Yeah. Peripheral? Man. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, church... Right. Church was really central, okay. like for sure. <laughs> right. Right. I grew up in an evangelical covenant church, oh. which I know wow. we in the vineyard. Well, we've been, we've been hanging friends. out with those guys. Yeah. 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 So my, my dad had grown up in an evangelical covenant mm. church. I think my grandparents had grown up in evangelical. Wow. Was one of them, you know, so it's like way, way back and sure. very Swedish. Huh. You know, there was like the Santa Lucia festival yeah. every year. Wow. Like, like definitely had like a moment in middle school like having to be a tomta in the San- Santa Lucia festival <laughs> that involved wearing red tights right. in seventh grade. That's I, like not a, yeah, it's not what you want. There's the whole outfit, right? It's yeah, the that's... whole thing. And you're like prancing around 
in front of your friend's parents. <laughs> Listen, with I, a little like tree behind you. I don't think this will be right if we don't have a picture or two. We could just put it right into the show right in notes. the show notes. Yeah, yeah. I I think fortunately this is before digital <laughs> photography, so I think this is lost to the sands of time. But you know oh, what? It's not lost I doubt to the sands that. Of time. I doubt that. That isn't true. My youth pastor, like, saw this coming like a freight train. <laughs> You know, seriously, he was like, because I, I was like the only boy in my right. year growing up oh. in my church. Um, it wasn't a big church. So it was like, you know, whatever, 12 of us that were like my year right. and I was the only boy. Oh, wow. And so he was like, oh, shoot. Dude, I know what you're like. It's coming. This is what's about to happen. And so he goes and talks to the folks that are putting together the Santa Lucia Festival. And he's like, hey, uh, <laughs> would it be okay if we had two tom? Actually, we're going to do the plural of tomta. I believe it's tomtar. tomtar. Can we have two tomtar this year? <laughs> And so my like 30 year old like youth pastor. Oh, did it with you. Did it with me. And that's cool. You know, I mean, the little tunic you've got to try to like cover yeah, a little bit did not work for him. Work for and him. all of a sudden, no one is looking at me. No. And it was like, no, I mean, I'm not even joking when I say like, it was like an early experience of like, wow. oh, that is like sacrificial this love. This guy cares about me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This guy had like seen what this was, go- <laughs> what this experience was going to be like for me. Right. <laughs> and, and pastor Dude. Doug, he was like, I'm. Dude. I'm in it with you. That's so great. You know? Seriously, that's okay. So you're in it enough that you're in youth group. Oh yeah, I'm in the I'm in the children's choir. Right. I'm like playing I'm playing offertory, you know, on the piano from like I don't know second grade, third grade. <laughs> like I was I was in you, it, are you know in my 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 little sister at one point, you know, when she's like she was whatever three years old or whatever it, whatever the age is when the kids are learning their like phone number and address for the first time <laughs> right. right it's like what's your phone number and she right. recites it right and what's your address and she says northbrook evangelical covenant church <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, that is yeah that's yeah like, it feels like not that's far off that's yeah. where we live you'll probably find us there <laughs> exactly that's where we're gonna be we can start taking deliveries there if we mm-hmm. need to yeah yeah, oh, yeah for sure is... i mean that's well before my mom was you know on st- i was gone before she was involved in ministry in the, in, in a sort of staff role or anything. Dude, that is so we were, cool. We were really... And it was positive. So when you think about your experience all the way through high school, that's pos- That's net positive. Like, Yeah. I mean, I had some sense along the way, and I don't know quite where this... Like, certainly by the time I was in high school, mm. I wanted some sort of differentiation. I had a sense right. that like there were Christians that were lame, and I wanted to make it clear to people that I wasn't one of those I'm lame Christians. That. Yeah, you know, right? Um, and not that that was like a healthy posture that was no, just no. important yeah, to me at sure. that time. It's called differentiating. So yeah. I mean, all teenagers <laughs> That's do like it. What right. adolescence is for? Right, right, exactly. Um, so there was there was some of that growing right. going on, and and in, you know, there's just the reality of growing up, and so mm. there definitely were moments later in my life mm. where sort of faith became kind of mine personally right. in ways that despite all the church attendance sure, sure. and right. and I think there was a lot of real things going on. I mean, I was, I was going to Bible camp like every summer that was like, really? I mean like, Oh, for a week. But that was like, hmm. that was a highlight of my highlight of my summer. It wow. was you know, the covenant church is this one of their big things. They're oh, invested yeah. in camping. Yes, and, they are. Um, yep. And you know, when, when I went to college, I was, I would, I went back and worked at those, at those camps as really? a counselor, worship leader, these sorts of things. So yeah, that, that was huge. And so each summer it felt like I was sort of having this, Mm. pretty profound encounter with mm. with god and with a kind of worship that i wasn't experiencing in my church i mean it was this right. was in like the worship wars right you know it was like there was a pipe organ our my church growing up literally shared land with a covenant retirement home really so it was yeah. like we had a steady supply yeah it was older <laughs> of right. older folk you know which honestly like these days i like come to really appreciate yeah yeah um, it's probably part of the reason why every once in a while there was like a, you know a verse of a hymn in swedish and like these sorts of things you know <laughs> right. i've heard you jo- i've heard you joke with people I have, about this listen i've talked to more than one person who's in covenant and they're like yeah we i would hear a song in swedish here and there and i'm yeah, like man. wow yeah that's pretty Pretty Swedish. That's pretty Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty. I mean, yeah. When you've got the red tights on, you're like, this is Swedish. Like that's. We've done it now. That's, that's what well, we're doing. And what's so interesting is to think about the covenant. So at the same time you're having this experience, there's other covenant churches mm. that are almost entirely black churches, for example. Right. Yeah. Well, and we, you know, we had a sort of, 
I, I don't know exactly when it was sometime in junior high school and high school, I started to become aware of a community called Jesus people mm. that were in the city. Mm-hmm. Glenn Kaiser was a musician mm-hmm. and a pastor there. He'd been the le- leader of the res band. I mean, this was all like yeah, before yeah, yeah. I was sort of aware of anything. Yeah. I, I just, I just knew he, he had a ponytail and <laughs> right. they, they used a drum set when they did worship. Right. So right. I was like, that's amazing. Whoa, like, yeah. I want that, right, you know? Right, right. And I remember actually, so, so that was a more, uh, a more diverse, mm-hmm. that was a sort of multi-ethnic community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sure there were probably black churches in Chicago in the covenant that we didn't interact <laughs> with. I mean, I'm just to being honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it was, was it just, was out of view. That's right. just what it was. Right. But I remember sort of the Chapuza community. Yeah. Called Jesus oh, People, I know. USA. Yeah. Totally. And they eventually do- adopted into the covenant. So that was a yep. covenant church at totally. some point. And, yep. um, man, I just thought those guys, they were doing li- they, like, mm. Fair or not, my experience of preaching growing up mm. in my particular covenant church, mm. in my particular church, I don't know if had much to do with the covenant, in my particular church on the North Shore, world of Ferris Bueller, yep. was basically the form was like, you'd read a passage and the pastor would be like, you know, you might at first think that this is making like, impossibly difficult demands on your life. Mm. It might sound like if you were reading this, it might sound like everything in your life might have to change. Fortunately, I am here to help. Let me help you. I'm here to help. Sanitize this slightly. Right, right. I don't know if you've heard about it. This is too wild. Right. There's this gate called the needle gate. (laughs) And, you know, I mean, camels, it was hard for them to get through, but it all worked out. Take it all off. They get on their knees. Yeah. Right, right. There's no needle gate, dude. (laughs) But like, anyway, so there's these... It, it was, it was, <laughs> there was, but that was, you know, that was part of the form. Dude, you, know, you it, just ruined a hundred people's moment right now. Well, I don't say- know. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe someone's going to be like, you know, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not the archaeology guy, right? Maybe Craig Keener is going to call in later be and like, be like, there is a needle gate. There yeah. How dare you? But it, I don't think, anyway, but, uh, <laughs> Chapuza seemed to be doing the opposite. Totally. Radical. You know? It was like, oh, you thought the bar was, you know, only right, this high. Right. Actually, it's you know, way I higher. Think it's even yeah, higher. Totally. Right? And and all of a sudden, you know, I mean, I really thought growing up in my church, it really felt like I was surrounded by a bunch of people who are who are wealthy, yeah. well educated, powerful. Yeah. And, you know, they were a lot of them, you know, VPs and senior VPs, you know, all state was based yeah. out of that. You know, just it was just all these folks yeah. that I mean that's not to rag on them at all right but it was, no, it was sort of like right. it was, there was a lot of incentives to make sure that the gospel is compatible with yes. life as it's being i mean we all have incentives to yes. construe the gospel yes as being very compatible with the lives that we're That's already exactly living, right right yes and and so i think it was just a little bit it was a sort of like <sighs> there's something in that encounter with japuza mm. and i don't want to inflate it it was just like it was just a little bit it's here and, there. and glenn was right. really I don't know. He just sort of made some time for me yeah. in some ways that, wow. you know, that, like kind of, that really matters I didn't know this part when of your you're story. like yeah. 16, 17 yeah. years old, you know. And you were doing music? You were playing music oh, at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, right. I was playing the piano at the time I was four or five years uh, old. And so I was like all in. And um, and I remember actually going to Glenn for what it's worth and, and saying, mm. you know, oh, I was just, you know, oh, you don't know how like oppressed we are. You know, we, we have to use the organ and like, it's just really hard to worship right. and those, you know, and he's like, it's like, oh man, I feel so bad for you. Like, I can't imagine what it would be like to have my ability to worship the Lord be subject to just like what kind of instrument they were using in worship. Woof. I mean, that would... That'd be pretty terrible. <laughs> how how small is your life? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I can't imagine having an imagination that small. Oh wow! Um, it's like, and oh, then you're like, I, this isn't going the way I thought it was going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I was like, dude, but you have a ponytail. Like, you have to be on my side. You gotta, you, we got to vibe this yeah, thing exactly. out, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, that's and amazing. so yeah, it was felt like every time I, you know, I I, I was going to try to zig and you know, he would zag, <laughs> and it was all this, you know, it was like, but it just made me that much yeah, more curious. He's, yeah, he's challenging you. Yeah, and I think I found something like that. Then when I went to college. Mm. In this, I was part of this year-long Bible study, the Gospel of Mark, mm. in university. Yeah, where where did you go? I first? went to Yale. You did go to Yale first. Yeah, oh, I thought yeah. you went somewhere else first. I've okay, just Yale. My entire adult all life the has Yale been at Yale, <laughs> um, which is like an entire. Uh, but when you go to Yale, are you thinking ministry oh, theology? No, no, no. no. Oh, I was going to Yale to become a. Uh, Ideally, the yeah. plan was yeah. I was going to be like a conductor of a major symphony orchestra wow. and like a composer in residence. I was like on the Aaron Copeland, Leonard wow. Bernstein 
plan. Like if there's a, if that's a track, I, that's the track sure. I wanted to be. So on. by then you've been writing some music, been writing a lot of music. Wow. Actually, well, in which you know. It, in part came from this. I mean, I was always interested in writing music, but my mom had some connections at Northwestern okay. and they've got a good music program yeah, there. And so by the time I'm in high school and I'm like, oh, I hate piano lessons. Can I please mm. stop? Can I please stop? Mm. It's like, all right, what if we make this deal? If you stop piano lessons, you'll start doing composition lessons because you really ah, like writing music, don't right. you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. So I was doing that. And then my senior year in high school, um, right before, or like in like a preseason, I was also playing soccer. Right, I was playing soccer. I was playing saxophone in the marching band. I was doing everything. Dude, right? the jazz yeah. band. I was doing all this stuff. And your church, whenever you're not church, doing those yeah, things, yeah, exactly. Like right. Just I was involved. Yeah, I was doing. I was living the unbalanced life that one <laughs> leads in order to then end up at Yale University. That's <laughs> yeah. that's what I was doing. You, yeah, my life was yeah. broken in all you of the have ways. The right resume, right? Yeah, totally. exactly. Like totally. the, yeah, the admissions <laughs> office was like that dude is broken in just the way <laughs> that's that we our are guy for. right yeah, yeah, yeah right and in a preseason tournament for the soccer team mm -hmm. i was playing goalie and i mm -hmm. went down on a breakaway and i you know they tell you like go just like take the ball off the go guy's grab foot the ball and, wherever it is yeah and then it's a really important second step there's a small little goalkeeping technique advice to mm -hmm. you know we don't I, I don't think you've had any of these yet on the podcast <laughs> no but, um, i haven't this is when you take the ball off it. the striker's foot yeah next thing you need to do after you tuck the ball tuck your head yeah roll right you gotta tuck your head right so i had i missed that last step i, I maybe didn't have time for that last step and and the guy just like followed through on my face which because i was sliding my yeah. yeah so it was like broken jaw oh um that's and, hard to break yeah jaws don't break very easy yeah and you get you, normally apparently this is how it happens you get an impact on one side and it breaks on the other because it's sort of like transfers yeah, energy it. and right. it's just like, anyway yep. so that was the end that was no uh, no saxophone. like bad enough you had to wire it yeah, wired shut. Ooh. I was talking like this for the whole, you know, oh, it, was a, it was a bad scene. And so that was, you know, no state band, no marching band, done, no concert right? band, no jazz band, no soccer, no senior season to go play wow. soccer somewhere. And I had a, um, I had, uh, there was a music teacher at that high mm. school. Actually, I didn't know that well. And I was kind of scared, scared of, honestly, mm. who called me in his office, like, mm. I, if, in my memory, it feels like it was like the next day, but I'm, I was probably home right. on like high on like pain meds for a little while. <laughs> right. But he sits me down. He's like, Hey, I heard, I heard your plans your, for your senior year just took a Are serious change. Done. Right. You know, he's like, I don't know if you know, but there's a music composition contest, you know, mm. in the state of Illinois. It's actually at that festival that you were hoping to be at playing the saxophone. Uh. Um, but like, there's like six or seven categories or whatever. Here's my challenge to you why don't you take this fall and why don't you write something so that you can submit a piece in every category? Wow. You, you just come here, we'll block out a, a, you know, a period of, you know, class time. Oh. We'll write it up as an independent study. You know, you can take an AP test at the end of it. If you, if you think you're ready for it and would want to do it, it was, he was just, he was just like, but like, there was, let's do this. This is a well-resourced suburban school, you know? So there's a recording studio here in the music right. department. Right. Like, that's at your disposal. But he still takes an interest. He's, oh, like, he's just seeing, and he's just like, he just like gives me the keys. Wow. Um, and yeah, anyway, so it's, yeah, it, mm. that, that was sort of part of the thing. So when I, by the time I applied to college, mm. it was on the back of, you know, I mean, I think I'd placed, I think I placed in every one of those categories. Wow. You know, I had, had like, I'd done all of, I'd written a whole bunch more music than I ever would have written. Sure. Gotten it recorded and put together nicely because I had to participate in this competition. Yeah. Do you know, artists normally aren't, you know, organization isn't, totally you know, often the follow suit. through finishing yeah. <laughs> right so it was like oh well, no i actually yeah. gotten some things over the finish has line to get and, like, done nicely right. prepared and totally um yeah anyway so that's what i came what an I incredible came senior year yeah it was amazing i mean not yeah. one you would have ever signed up for yeah but then there that, were downsides well i'm, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> i'm sure there were but still get all things considered i mean yeah and so that amazing. guy did you keep up with that guy that teacher Honestly, Jay, he was still not my favorite person. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real. I'm just being honest. Like, no, it's he okay. He was like the mean disciplinarian. But, like, but what in do the you department. think made him do that? I don't know. Honestly, like, I don't, I don't know either. if it was like other guys. Uh, uh, they were Someone came men. to him other and said, Other folks yeah. that were in the department right. and were like, here's this, this hey, kid that we've this been. this horrible thing. Yeah. You Somebody, know, could you help him out? Right. You know. And he's like, he's okay. not be playing in my band anymore. Right. <laughs> Maybe he could do something, you know. That's still you. like. It's interesting to me knowing what you do now. Yeah. yeah. Like. Impact to teachers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Like the, because, I mean, if you ask a hundred people, 
what was the most impactful thing you had happen with a teacher? It's sad how many don't really have a story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, they just don't have one or they're like, well, I really liked this one class. You know, they might like the content or whatever, but that's more than that. That's someone going, hey, this is a thing I can do that I think could help. And it helps you, frankly, see that you can do a lot of things maybe you didn't think you could do. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that was the plan when I when I came to Yale was like, I'm going to write a bunch of music. And I did. I took a Hmm. there was a music composition seminar that they managed to come up with enough course numbers for me to take it all eight semesters. You know, like I was, that was just, I was doing that all the that whole time. So great. But meanwhile, you're doing intervarsity. Intervarsity. I wasn't going to church. Mm-hmm. Um, my first year, at least right. I was in intervarsity. I met, I met a girl in mm-hmm. that Bible study <laughs> who I'm married to. to me. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And, uh, and I think that Bible study, you know, really, it was that Japuza thing. Yeah. It was that like, you know, it was like, it, yeah, you like, it's, oh man, it sounds like Jesus is asking for yes. you know, six units of, <laughs> right, of right, courage. Right, right. Like what if he's actually asking for 11? Yeah. And well, it's amazing when you actually just live in the text. Yeah. How much more work you have to do. I mean, like, which would be a strength of intervarsity, at least in the way that yeah. I've yeah. experienced them. Well, with. that's what this was. This was like, you know, this was no verse numbers, no chapter numbers. Wow. It was just, you know. We'll read like, it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's here and and everything. Mm. And it was no like, you know, not checking the little study notes. We're not. Right, right, know, right. It's right. just, it's just yeah. inductive Bible study. Wow. What can we make? What, what can we gift. make of this? And it was, it was extraordinary. And I think it mm. really, it captured my imagination. Mm. It, um, I think to that, I mean, the passage that really got me was the rich young ruler. Mm. And it was, you know, I, I just thought, I had thought sort of growing up that like everybody just wants to be rich and powerful and right. whatever. And to be a Christian meant that you pursued those same things, but with one hand tied behind your back because mm. you had to do it with like, while being like moral, yeah, you know? Huh. And it just, it, honestly, I think in certain ways, like it hadn't occurred to me mm. that Jesus would want to like, become like Lord of my ends rather yeah. than like police my means. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like totally. it's like, oh shoot, maybe it's not just about like chasing after what I wanted to chase after anyway, mm-hmm. but now like trying to be like, like a good kid. Mm. <laughs> but maybe Jesus is invested in different goals for my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I, I, I mean, that was all, I suppose, downstream of like, I'll, it's funny how like this one Bible study, like, like just moments, I just remember them, like these passages yeah. just dropping like bombs in my right. life, you know, like right yeah. at the beginning of the gospel of Mark, Jesus is calling disciples. And all we know about Peter and Andrew is that they're fishermen and Jesus yeah. calls them and they leave their nets. And all we know about yep. James and John is that they're brothers of their father and Jesus calls them and they leave their father in the mm-hmm. boat. And, you know, I remember the Bible study leader just asking us, what defines you? Yes. And what would it look like for Jesus to, to call say, you to leave that behind? Come, right. Come follow him. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was, I mean, it was like so obvious. That yeah. was like, I mean, cause that's early in the gospel. So we're like three weeks into our Yale experience. Like <laughs> right. what defines you? I'm, I'm like, I'm 17 years old and right. I'm a Yale undergraduate. Like, Getting into Yale, like yeah, I'm a Yaley. This like, is it. This right. is it. Like everything I'd done, I put it on a piece of paper. <laughs> yes. It was paper back then. I yes. sent it to some office right. I had no idea about in yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. And and they had said like, all right. You're like, good. You're, you're good. good enough. This you is can it. do this. Wow. And so it's like, so who are you? And what would it mean for, and I mean, we had a, we had a, mm. a friend who was in that Bible study with us. who was like, who was like, all right, good point. She, she dropped out. She was like, Wow. She's like, I, I'm sure there's a way to follow Jesus and like not mm. have my identity tied up in being a Yaley. I'm not sure I can find that. And wow. I think I'll have an easier time finding that if I go somewhere else. You know? Wow. And it was. That's taking things pretty seriously. I mean, so, but that was, those were the stakes, right? Mm. As we were going through this mm. and it was like, all right, well, if you're not going to go that direction, what are you going to do that's at least as radical, mm. <laughs> right? Within the, <laughs> yeah. within this space. And so when I listen to you, you have obviously discipline, hard work. You're in a focused family. No, I mean, like you don't do all the things you were doing. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you. I mean, the rule in my house was you perform perfection outside the home. Right. And then you are a basket case when you get home. 
right? Because who you could just collapse, right? Yeah, yeah, because who could, right? Like, totally. right? Because you're performing oh, yeah. too at much. like, you know, 140 out of 100, yes. you know, all day all long. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and but, yet, so, yeah. within that, then with some of that drivenness and intensity and perfectionism, whatever, you start to notice followers of Jesus that draw you draw some of that intensity to a different conclusion. Like you said, means and ends. So the Japusa people, yeah. you're like, wait a minute, what's that? Right. And yeah. then now you're in this Bible study going, wait a minute. Th- there's more to this. Like yeah. this, a- this asks things of me yeah. that don't just say, hey, give us your best and we'll see what we can do with it. It's uh, actually, we're going to try to make you into a different kind of person. Yeah. That's not what's interesting listening to that because I, knowing a bit about you, often what people do with their success is insulate themselves from those types of experiences, right? Like I don't need, I don't need to talk to the radical because I already make X amount of money and mm. I have these other things I'm trying to do. That's why the rich young ruler is so fascinating. Right, right, right. Is he's going? I'm pretty great at everything. Um, no, I'm serious. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Like. Well, how do I how do I be great at this? You know, I'm great at all this other stuff. Right. How do I be great at this? And Jesus is like, oh, it's not how it works. This is not. You're not going to like this next part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he looks at him and, and he loves him. him. Right. And then he says, and then he goes, oh, and then he just wrecks him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's interesting that that's the story that hits you, the nets. So what I hear when I hear that is a sense of calling starting to get screwed into you you know like god is already starting to say man i'm so this is so great you can do all this great stuff but i'm going to start requiring things of you that you would not have asked for yourself hmm. early i mean those are pretty early formative experiences yeah. yeah yeah for sure that's pretty cool it's unusual yeah I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> you don't, there's nothing to say <laughs> other like than grateful. Well, but it makes sense of then subsequent decisions. Mm-hmm. Then you're, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I could be wrong. You're not composing pieces that <laughs> you're, you, you, you change the track. I think. Well, is, yeah. I mean, so what happened with that? I mean, honestly, what happened, right. I sort of had my moment that my our friend Aubrey had who mm-hmm. dropped out of Yale and went elsewhere. Yeah. But for me, it was with music. I, I realized right. at some point along the way mm. I, I was much more interested in being famous than in being good. Right. I mean, I, and I don't even mean morally good. I was much more interested in being famous than in, than having the music even be any mm-hmm. good. And it was just this, this like this disordered mm. attachment. And again, yeah. like, and I sort of came to this place that, that our friend came to that yeah. was like, I'm sure there are lovely God honoring ways to be deeply invest, to be invested as an artist, to yes. be creating beautiful Somebody things can in the world. That. Somebody right. can do that. Right. I'm not sure I can, or at least, yeah. and I, and honestly, I, I, I tell this story wow. quite often and I, I usually say like, I'm not sure. And I genuinely mean it. It's not just a line. Like I, I, I'm not sure whether it was the most courageous or the mm. most cowardly thing I've right. ever done. I right. Mean, Cause maybe the harder thing would have been to try to stick it out to, to figure, figure out, that out how to totally. be yep. that person. But I, um, and it, and it took a long time. It was after mm. college and I was, I was already starting to take some, some other steps, but I was mm-hmm. still writing some music, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, friends making a movie. All mm-hmm. right, let's like let's yeah, write a little bit of music something. or whatever right. it might be. Eventually it was like, you know what, mm. that, that thing that wants to be, wants to be known, wants to be, wants yeah. to build a name. Like it's just not worthy of being the center of my life. Right. And for whatever reason, music like gets me into that mindset right. ways that other things. So, I mean, I mean, as it turns out, self-obsession is a highly transferable skill. <laughs> um, and actually like you like can- Like I can use these things, like, yeah, like, elsewhere. Like, like, I can right. be self-obsessed like as like a theologian, <laughs> as it turns out. Like that's not, um, you know, right. leaving music that's doesn't so solve great. that problem. Um, uh, but it was an important discipleship step for sure, yes. right? To sort yeah. of take like the thing that, also, that kind of was my identity in that yes. sort of way to be like, all right, well, you're saying come follow. Yes. Like, I'm, I'm willing to come follow. Mm. Um, yeah, actually a little bit during the pandemic, there's been a little bit of like, 
a flicker it's writing a little bit oh, you know, uh, yeah anyway so it's like so well, i don't that's know cool. I, I, I don't know if that story is over but um I, it's well, been, i highly doubt it is you know 20 years well almost 20 years now of sure of investing myself very much musically in the church yeah, yeah, yeah. and leading worship yeah. and being yeah. part of bands yeah. and even songwriter circles or whatever but yeah. not that like writing music for yeah. concerts for yeah. well because you know what that other thing was right, the, right, right. the form of obsession required is yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty yeah. severe yeah. yeah okay so so then how do you turn so some of it's that calling thing yep. but yep. how do you start to turn towards i think i might be called to theology and yeah. ministry yeah. and when do those things actually yeah. drop so some of it i think was like a there's like the leadership development engine of university, mm. honestly. Yeah. Um, and there were some like, just some happenstance things. Um, <laughs> our, uh, we didn't realize this when we were recruited as first year students, but mm. the fellowship that we were joining was sort of dwindling. <laughs> oh, it's already suffering. Right. <laughs> we sort of needed some, a new crop yes, of leaders. We need some new blood. Right. And so like sophomore year, it was like, sweet. You, you all want to be in charge now? <laughs> yeah, would you like to teach this week? <laughs> Why like, don't you what? just, do this thing you know wow. and so at mm. least you know sophomore year was like we were all leading our own bible studies oh, okay and yeah so some of it was just that leadership development engine sure um and it just started to find life and joy mm. in that and i think it was just leadership as discipleship mm -hmm. right it was like mm -hmm. how am i going to grow as a follower of jesus well i'm mm. going to take this next leadership risk yep. and i'm going to do this thing and then i mean on the academic side there's also just I, <laughs> you know, you had to study a language and mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to study a living language because I was freaked out about oral exams. So that basically cut it down to like Latin or Greek. And uh, I had heard somewhere that some part of the Bible was written in Greek. And I, I probably could have told stuff. you which part of the Bible oh was written God. in Greek. I love but I was this. like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll take Greek. Greek will be great. That'll be good. <laughs> and so then like, you know, after a little while, I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to Bible <laughs> camp for the summer as a counselor right. and I'm bringing my Greek New Testament with right. me to try to keep my Greek up because those were always my worst, oh, by far my right. worst grades in college right. was Greek. I mean, if those people <laughs> knew now that like I like when I'm doing a PhD, they would be like, that, that kid? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> um, but, uh, uh. you know, anyway, so I'm sort of finding like this... Honestly, I mean, a little bit, to be totally honest, is probably like a little bit of like, oh, I liked having like secret insight into sure, like sure. The scriptures yeah, of I'm, people. I'm of, on the God. inside now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah totally. Listen to me. Hey. So that wasn't always sense. healthy, but it was a, it was a real thing. And so I was, but uh -huh. I was finding a way to like deepen this sort of encounter with scripture and this love mm. for scripture and this encounter with God in scripture. Mm. And so I think those things started to come together more and more. Yeah. Sometime late, in, late on in college, I did a summer internship at Willow Creek community really? church yeah dude this is uh, great i had no idea yeah, yeah, yeah so it was like you know all all of my yale like I, mean, I don't think we were quite as intense as like the current undergrads are but you know people are doing like big name internships i mean right. these days uh, my students are doing like you know they're at google totally at, you know facebook yeah or, you know not willow creek yeah not, yeah, yeah i was doing ministry every <laughs> summer like it just became i don't know it's my thing you know and it felt <laughs> I don't know. So it did start to but feel like we start the, to connect the dots. But what's that internship? Like, what are you oh, doing? Man. I was, I, well, it was a little bit of like the Yaley in me was right. like, I mean, I've been doing ministry for a little while. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I'm I, mean, I should do, do it. it. I should do it at like a world-class level. The best. Right. <laughs> totally. Willow Creek is the absolute best. So yeah. It's, yeah, it I, is near home. It's new, new I, where we grew it up. It was and, in, right. you know, in, in Chicagoland, as right, we say. Right. And, uh, I, I just like called them up or I emailed them or whatever it was. And I was like, Hey man, like I'm a musician. Yeah. Actually, I, honestly, I was probably like, Hey guys, I'm a pretty amazing musician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Yale right now. Yeah. I don't know if you've you, heard of it. You guys, anything, yeah. anything you might need Yeah, from maybe. Me? I don't <laughs> know. Um, and yeah. And, and like, God bless, you know, whoever's on the other end of that email. Uh, They're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. They were like, okay, cool. Like come hang. And so I had this little thing with the young adult ministry. Did you really, what was that called? Uh, Axis. Yes. Axis. That's what it was called. There you go. What year is that? Probably like summer of 2000. Dude, I knew who those people were. Yeah. That's fascinating. So it was like, yeah. oh, honestly, I can't remember. Like Eric. Some, yeah. Anyway. Well, cause, cause we had and done Steve... Joshua house stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in that same kind of, kind of, yeah. window where young yeah. adult things are popping up and yeah it's, i mean and you're si i'm sitting in staff yeah. meetings where it's like you're literally looking at like the baptism numbers right. like year over year and you're like it's got to just be like an exponential curve yes you know like 900 baptized last year yes. like you know 
stay on pace we're looking right. like 1300 ish like what's that gonna, you know it's like yeah it's just this like it's a machine yeah you can hear the gears in the walls yeah, yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but <laughs> right. it also for me was it was a place to like invest a bunch of i mean a church of that scale even in the young adults ministry mm -hmm. it was like a few thousand people yeah. and so you know preparation for worship was like was like you know writing for a no, you know, for like a television show, no, you know, you're doing storyboarding oh, yeah. and skits and we're producing little video right. clips and I'm like, <laughs> right. you know, so I'm like picking out, you know, I'm, I'm taking like, you know, moody photographs to like Dude, be the video this. part while we play some Matchbox 20 song, you know, on stage. Like it was, oh man, but it was, yeah, that, that summer early on in that internship, I, uh, I jammed my <laughs> pinky finger playing basketball and was like useless on the piano for like oh. the entire summer. So it was like the Lord like the nicely thing you were meant to do pulled this rug out oh, from under me. Amazing. And so actually, what I remember from that summer most of all was a, was some like pretty deep discipleship conversations. As it turns out, the mm. worship leader for that ministry was was a pretty intellectual guy and was huh. like, "Hey, have you heard of this guy John Piper?" Wow. And, you know, I don't know if you know, but John Piper's heard of this guy called Jonathan Edwards. Right. Like, There's a college, but like, I, like yeah, I, I don't know. know. But like, wow. you know, like, sweet. Like, maybe I should read. Yeah, because you've been doing Bible studies things. and yeah, reading Greek. But wasn't doing not that. Right. Wasn't doing like church history. Wow. Or whatever. And so that was helpful. And then it was those late nights next to the man-made Willow Creek Lake. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> on my way, just kind of asking the Lord, like, why am I here? What am I Like, doing? I was here to be awesome. Right. And yeah. I am... I am not awesome. I'm not that awesome. Yeah. Like, I think I probably wasn't that awesome to begin with. Right. But I am like definitely yes. not awesome with yes. this like, you know, lame, broken pinky finger or yes. whatever. Yeah. So anyway, that was, that was some of the stuff like going through. But that, that means that you're thinking ministry. I was leading. starting to think ministry. So by the time I graduated from Yale, it was like probably the next step is going mm -hmm. to like Gordon Conwell or right. Fuller. Right. Or Ted's maybe. I don't know. You know. <laughs> right. Because that was near where I had. I'd sure. gone to a goalkeeping camp. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was at, it wasn't run right. by Ted's, but it was hosted right. there. You know, I, yeah. I knew of that place. Yes. North Park. Yes. That's yes. know, the covenant place. The covenant place. Yeah. But uh, we stay on. We do some, uh, we, I, by that point, Hannah and I were pretty serious. We weren't mm -hmm. married yet, but we were living in a big community house and mm. we were in different apartments. Okay? <laughs> I didn't this is say important. This, No, it was <laughs> so funny. We went, recording. To get our, our, uh, our <laughs> we went to get our marriage license. Yeah. You have the same address. We have the same address. <laughs> but, and, and, and the, the woman's like, and we're like, oh no, but hey, could you write like mine's, um, you know, whatever it was, yeah, 31 apartment, Lake Place apartment number F. two. Right, right. <laughs> um, she's 31 Lake Place apartment number three. <laughs> and this woman looked at us. She's like, like what is this for your parents? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, right, we're, right. we're thinking like, yeah, sometimes like our great grandchildren <laughs> yeah. are going to look at this thing and be like, dude, great grandma and grandpa were Scandal, scandal. Anyway. Right. So, um, that was our world. You know? Right. So, of course. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we, I, I stayed on, I was a full-time volunteer for mm. InterVarsity. Wow. Which is a really lucrative. Right. Uh, a lot of track. money in that. Right. I was running a recording studio at the university like 10 hours a week for the Center for Language Study where they did all those oh, oral examinations that I right. never wanted to have. Wow, and you're running them now. now. I'm yeah. working for right. those people. It's <laughs> perfect. Um, and uh, so we did, you know, ministry with InterVarsity for a year uh, at Yale and at Wesleyan University. Uh, I was doing that. Hannah was working for uh, an Episcopal uh, nonprofit okay. an after school program huh. for, um, with, uh, with inner city kids. And we got married at the end of that end of that year, and then we thought, well, we probably shouldn't go off. Maybe we, we probably shouldn't get married and then immediately leave everyone we know. Right, so right. maybe we'll keep staying in yeah, New Haven, hang around, figure something out, right? And uh, by I think somewhere along the way, like one of my New Testament professors, uh, Harry Attridge, had told me mm -hmm. about this thing called the Institute of Sacred Music at Yale. Wow! And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I've done a you know, I take these Bible classes at the Divinity School because eventually, because okay. I learned that there was this thing called an exegesis course, right? Where you could get a whole college course worth of credit studying one book of the Bible. Wow! And I'm like, that sounds for sure. I'm like, we read like a book of the Bible in like, the <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, that sounds like a scam. Like, I got to get yeah, in on this racket. For sure. You know? Yeah. So I did a couple of those. And okay. Did some Hebrew. Oh, I was okay. Like, you know, I don't know. I had a friend who was interested in teaching yeah. Hebrew. So well, and like, you're oh, in it. Right. I'm in it. Right. I'm yeah. doing. The, I'm doing the yeah. thing. So anyway, so he was like, Institute of Sacred Music. I'm like, this is great because I like not choosing, um, yes. not having to make a choice. Let's so I can do keep the music going <laughs> and do this like <laughs> right. biblical language Free thing, volunteering. Yeah. And they pay for you to go to. It was like free. If wow. you can get in. So was, what was the course? What is it? 
it's just a it's just a certificate you get alongside whatever else you would do as okay. a normal divinity student or oh, or music student. Oh, okay. And so I went on the divinity side. Mm. Um, started so I ended up doing my divinity school at Yale, right? Because through I, that door, through that door, interesting. And because we'd spent some time in New Haven, and we were yeah, starting like to get it. right. And I forgot to tell you, we were involved in a vineyard church by that. That's point. what I was going to say. When did the vineyard appear? Sophomore year. So I hadn't <laughs> gone to church my freshman year. Okay, okay, great. And we had all decided we'd had a sort of uh, you know August retreat for university. That's basically yeah. where we figured out like, oh, the yeah. leadership plan for this thing is it's, like all of us. us now, we're, now right? us, we're in charge <laughs> yeah. now. And so you know, I I, I take, love it. I, I took to that rather rapidly. So I was sure. like, all right, Let's cool. If we're in charge, then I'll tell you one thing that that is really not going well in this. <laughs> in this uh, fellowship is I, I heard that some people aren't even going to church. Oh, like me, like yourself. <laughs> so so yeah. I was like, I mean, are really, people supposed to go to church? We right. got to help these first years, like go to church. So, great. Um, so I was like, well, I don't know where to go to church. Right. So I'll put myself in charge of Let's the find list one. of places to totally. go to church. Let's just go visit. So I had this like list of places and I was like, I'm going to church. Like my first Sunday of this new school year, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. And I was going to go to the covenant church. Right. And there was a covenant That's church your in, in New Haven. Yep. And I'm calling and right. there was no website at that point. I'm calling, I'm calling. <laughs> right. Nobody answers the phone. At that point, it's like 10 o'clock. And huh. I'm like, oh my God. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. not go to church. Now what again. do I do? Right? <laughs> right. And so I look at my list of churches and it said the vineyard church still had a pickup. If I ran, I could make it to the vineyard oh, church. Cause they'll come pick you up in they a van. Were picking, yeah. There's somebody, some, oh. it was just somebody station wagon. And I dropped it. <laughs> seriously. Like I just like jumped in the back of the car. I, I, I gave it way more. Oh, no, I'm no, like, no, Oh, no. there's a fan. Oh no, 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 no. no, no. no it's this a, a small church. Okay. And, good. and, and, but I'm like, oh, but I can at least go to church. Yeah, I can make out of my commitment. I'm going to church. And so I go and, um, <laughs> the guy is, you know, the, the, there's a, there's a drum set you know, for worship. Oh, I'm like, Ooh, maybe I these remember are, this. Yeah. Uh, maybe these are, right. <laughs> maybe these are the people I've been looking for. <laughs> yes. And then at the end of the set, the drummer comes up and starts giving the announcements. And I'm like, Whoa. And then after he's done giving the announcements, he starts giving the sermon. Oh, and I'm like, dude, the drummer this is, it. Is, is the pastor. Is the preacher. Oh, I love it. And then I was like, well, you know what? Yeah, like, the pastor is a drummer. <laughs> and I didn't know like which one of those was better, but like <laughs> right. the, the, that was really good. Dude, for, you know, so good. I was like, I am like, I'm I'm stoked. You this know? is my place. Yeah. Well, I wasn't quite sure yet, but I, I got home and that afternoon after church was mm -hmm. when we were going to hand out this list of churches to yep. all the uh, first year the students. People you're trying to get to go to church. Because of, of course I'm an old wise right, sophomore right. and I got to totally. make sure these kids... I got to go to church on like I did. And so I didn't have a name for a student contact for the mm. vineyard. So I just wrote my name down. It's you. <laughs> I just wrote my name down. <laughs> I'd been one time. This is now my church. And so I, I had first years calling oh, me I love it. every week. Hey, for can like, I go with you to the vineyard? Hey, I heard you're the vineyard guy. I'm like, uh, yes, sure. I am. Of course I am. Yes, I am. Dude, that's perfect. And so I had to go for like six or seven or eight weeks. I kept having these students call me. And that was really important because the first yes. teaching series that fall was on like bodily, like what, like the impact of like encounter with the Holy Spirit, like on our bodies. That was a, the series? Like, as I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to say, that's quite a series title. I think it was, <laughs> man. I think it was something like that. But for me, as like a Swedish, right? like, I, I mean, You're raising like, hands, whoa. highly controversial, dude, probably dude, inadvisable. This is so great. Because don't you, know, you wish you could find series is like this like can, no i'm serious can well, i go like, back and listen to this <laughs> yeah, is this what i remember <laughs> it almost <laughs> certainly wasn't right? like, go back and be, it'd probably be some like lovely like really like well thought out like really smart thing about just like life with the living god or something you know what i mean but there was some stuff in right. there that honestly right. if i hadn't had to go yeah i'd have bailed on you wouldn't have seen right? it because like right. i had grown you know my context is like there yeah. were two things that like you had to believe in because it was right. like it was like it's like part of the gig, but right. like if you thought about them too much, things would get weird. Yes. Right? It was the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the book of Revelation. Yeah. Those two. Things. Right? Like, like you can't you can't cut the I book like of Revelation that. out of the Bible. No. But it, like it's in there. But try not to think about it. But if it. you spend a lot of time, it's right. gonna get weird. Totally. Yes. I kind of still think that. Um <laughs> I like Revelation. I mean, I, but I teach plenty of Revelation. Well, I bet you do. But I mean, it's, it's doing still what I do, pretty freaky. But right? it's still, like, you it's know, if you're freaky. like, if you arrive at a church and like, what do we, like, what are your core we're, scriptures? We're in our fourth. Like, mostly the book of Revelation. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I don't. Uh, it's probably I not mean, my church. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, and it was the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yes, there's a Trinity. Yes. The third. But let's just 
But like, you know, if you're going to, don't try too hard. If you're going to emphasize, like things right. are going to get weird. <laughs> right. If you spend too much time on that. Yes. And I was like, these, this is the weirdness. And it turns out it did. It is true. And, um, you know, that was 1998 or whatever. And that so it's so great. There's, there's some weirdness going around sure. the vineyard in oh, the nineties. Yeah. I was, and, I was in that. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyway, I think I, if I hadn't had that thing, How cool. that I had to be there. But then that's your church for but, some And that reason. was crucial, man, because, you know, as I started to do more and more mm -hmm. of that Bible, that academic Bible track, mm -hmm. the sort of biblicism of my evangelical upbringing yeah. sort of came apart in my hands. Mm. And if I hadn't had a community that was regularly leading me into like encounter with the yeah. living God, yeah, I think once the the sort of certain features of that biblicism fell apart, yeah. my faith would have fallen apart. Right. But like as the sort of, as what it meant to encounter God through scripture, which is still a hundred percent central in yes. my life through this whole process. Right. But as that was getting reconfigured, right? Mm. Like, you know, a gap would show up, right. but I was getting caught yeah. right, by this like Holy Spirit practice. Yeah. Um, I, I had a community of people who, I mean, I, in, in when I was in college, I had a stack of books next to my bed and I had a sort of like, there was, it was, it was like a physical representation of my like epistemological pyramid. This was mm -hmm. like, you know, what do I believe in? Mm -hmm. And I remember every night it was really, it was my Bible, my prayer journal and uh, my like um, devotional book that I was mm -hmm. reading through. And, and I always make sure when I put it next to the bed, the Bible had to go on the bottom mm -hmm. and then my prayer journal. And then, because it was like, Hey, Hey, experience is dangerous. <laughs> you got to make sure, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point in when I was in college, it was like, you know what? Because I had a friend ask me, non non Christian, why do you, why do you believe what you believe? Yeah, and I was like, well, first of all, you just got to know, like, I just believe the Bible's true. And he's like, why? Yeah, and I'm like, I, that's not a question I ask. I don't really know. It just I can't, is, right? I, I, so for me, the way my life works is mm -hmm. I don't ask that question. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, you know, I, as as I was sort of living with this in this community and like the vineyard was sort of doing this new thing in my life, I started realizing, you know what? That's not true. I have reasons for believing the Bible because mm. I've read the Bible and I've mm. lived it out in my life and I've tried it out and yeah. I've, you know, God has been described in these sorts of ways and I pray mm. and I encounter a God who's very much like that or Jesus yes. gives a suggestion of a way I might live my life and how it might look like if I took those risks and did those things and I found yeah. those things to be true. Yes. And so I remember there's this like big moment of like taking the prayer journal, like, putting it underneath. Mm. And I was like, I don't know, is this it's like sacrilegious, okay. right, right, you know? Right. But it was like, the Bible's central for me. Yeah. But the the Bible's authority in my life, at least mm. as I've experienced it, mm. has come from this these ex experiences like interacting yeah. with Jesus. So, and, and I think that wouldn't have, I think I wouldn't have had language or I wouldn't have felt permission to do that. And I, I think my sort of, at least that stage of my sort of deconstruction would have sure. would have led me out out of the church. At well, least and for it, a it's long an interesting season. problem that you know better than I do for what you do now. The amount of folks that come from you said it very quickly, but tight, clear evangelical frameworks on what the nature of Scripture is, the historicity of the Bible. Pa 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 pa. Then they end up in these academic environments, and people start pretty convincingly showing you there's major holes in the way you understood how this works, yep. like who wrote what, when, and in what order. And there's no way they could have actually wrote this bit. So maybe they wrote this other part of it, but definitely not this other part. And so what does that mean? And, yeah. and then what does that mean for inspiration and authority and da, 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 da. And these are important things to learn. They're, they're, there's no reason why we should be afraid to take a critical look at the historicity and the sort of authorship and how all those things work together. But to your point, what often happens mm. to kids in that environment is now the whole thing yeah. is suspect. Yeah. All of a sudden they're going, well, wait a minute. If I was told this thing about Genesis or how Isaiah was constructed or how to understand the Exodus, let alone like, whatever first Thessalonians is or, you know, like, wait a minute, if those things aren't the way that I understood them in the sort of simple way, what is this faith I have? What else have they been, what else have they been hiding from me? I mean, exactly. Right. Part, right? Oh yeah. Like, am I being duped? Yeah. 
And to your point, the thing that I've noticed more than almost anything else is the students that do that work that have had honest, life-giving connection to God and or usually both a community that they've walked with in a way that offers them hope and a sense of God's spirit. I don't know how else to say it, like just experiences with the living God. Though those things can be pretty rattling and shaking, they go, well, it turns out I kind of just know this is true. I mean, I, I don't know out of just the life that I've lived in this bit, I guess, might not have been quite right. Like, I might not have had that quite lined up the right way, or maybe there's another way to think about that. That doesn't have to pull the rug right out from under me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, by the, by the time... By the time I was in divinity school and like deconstruction part two came, right. <laughs> which like happens which to is a normal. lot of people, totally. I had enough confidence in God's work in the midst of that work. Mm-hmm. So that, that, I mean, I remember regularly telling people like, it feels like God is causing me to lose my faith. Mm. But if it's God that's causing me to lose my faith, like how could I, yeah. I mean, like then it can't be final or ultimate. I mean, it's right. just, it's just gotta be a reconfiguration. Yeah. Right. And so, Reconstruction was always part of the deconstruction, right? And it was... And that's a key phrase. Just always, because it was this sort of like God's agency, right? And sort of like, Mm -hmm. I found myself saying, which I I mean, this one I'll still stand by. You know, I... (laughs) uh, It's part of why I still, I don't know, we talk about, I struggle with these labels like evangelical, Mm -hmm. but it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm stuck with it. Because, you know, for example, like one of my (laughs) biggest, you know, one of my biggest problems with Biblicism is, and we, I don't know, maybe we don't have to get into detail of what I mean exactly by that, but some sort of sense that like, that, well, my, one of my hardest parts of it was somewhere I had gotten the idea that like any fair-minded person who read the Bible Mm. would come to the only rational possible conclusion that Jesus died on the cross to save them from their sins. Yeah. And I just watched fair-minded person one after the other, like I'd invite them to Bible study and they'd be like, this is cool, but like, no thanks. No. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, so like the Bible is this like magic book that right. like did this stuff. To, I was looking for life in scripture. Mm-hmm. I think that's the sort of biblicism. That's one feature of biblicism yeah. that I, I find really unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> for what's worth, I also think it's unbiblical, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Jesus says like you search the scriptures because in them you believe you have life. Yes. Um, but they testify to me. Yeah. Right. And so there's a sort of, so that, that you know, it was, it was I think it was God's grace to me. There was a mm. lot of those, it would always come in those pairs, you know, where it yes. would be this sort of thing of like, yeah, that's not, that's not really how it works. Yeah. But there's this other, but, but actually it's okay. It's uh, God's actually the one doing this work. He can do it. That, right. Which means that God is still very yes. much real, very much active in, in, mm. in my life. Scripture isn't surprised yes. that scripture is not as, you know, modern Western Christians imagined it to be right. exactly. Totally. <laughs> God has a few uh, tricks up God's sleeves. <laughs> God is unsurprised, you know, right. by some of these right. sorts of critiques. Yes. And there are modes of life with Jesus on the other mm. side of those questions, or even in the midst of those questions. I yeah. had Fran Love, oh. Rick and Fran, um, God yeah. dropped them into our church plants as we, you yeah. know, when we desperately needed them. And I remember Fran Love saying to me, she said, you know, the longer I follow Jesus, the more I find that there's more and more questions, mm-hmm. but also more and more assurance. Yeah. And I was just like, I mean, that was, for me, that was, that was yeah. it. That was the, the lifeline. That was the lifeline, right? Yeah. That was the lifesaver. And I'm like, if I can hold on to that. Mm. And it really was. And I loved her choice of that word assurance. Yeah. Not certainty, right? Certainty is something you right. have in yourself. Right. Assurance is something you only, someone has to give you assurance, yes. right? It's relational, yes. right? And it was like, and that's great because actually, you know what else is relational? A question. Yeah. Right. So, so actually these questions I was asking, as long as I was asking them of Jesus, asking yes. them of God, mm. that wasn't taking me out of, again, another great evangelical ideal. Right. Relationship with Jesus. Yes. Um, personal. And I think also social and yeah, collective yeah, yeah, and all yeah, yeah, things, yeah, but yeah, also yeah, right. personal yes, relationship yes, with yes, Jesus. Yes. And if, and if, as long as you take your question and you, and you mm. point it in that direction, mm. Again, God's not afraid. And and, anyway, it's just really that sort of like, okay, then my certainty, I might find certainty after certainty Mm -hmm. (laughs) sort of falling down like dominoes. But but if the questions themselves are giving opportunity for Jesus to respond and for the spirit to respond Mm -hmm. and the father to respond with assurance that I need. Yeah. Well, that's actually only taking me deeper into this life with God, not Yes, I'm doing better.
Every month, we introduce a new book or recommended resource to dig in deeper. For the last quarter of 2023, we'll be focusing on gospel proclamation. And this month, we're recommending that you read The Gospel Precisely by Matthew Bates. The Gospel Precisely is available wherever books are sold. And so, okay, so you, you, you said a bunch of things there that I think are true and that I think are helpful. But you do this now for a living. I mean, skipping all the way ahead, yeah, yeah. You're, you help plant a church, you're planting a church, you still are helping Vineyard Church in the same town. Yeah. Now you do this kind of work for a living. You're on the other side of the desk, so to speak, <laughs> and you're teaching and you're leading and you're writing beautifully. What would you want to say either to yourself in that, because you kind of maybe said parts of it from Fran, or what do you say? Because you have student X walk in the door who's learning and reading. And I know you teach them classes to the end of helping people live well in the midst of these things. But it's not just an academic question, like the sort of deconstruction that's afoot in our current moment freaks out a lot of pastors because they're going, I, I, it, what they tend to want to do is double down. So now I'm just going to say everything again. Just a little stronger with a little more detail. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, which is kind of like the, like the, the, the stereotype of the terrible American tourist who like encounters someone who doesn't speak English and just just speaks it like more loudly and slowly. Let me just say it again. But louder. Uh, I need some salt. Right. It's (laughs) like, well, if they didn't know what the words meant, that's, Mm -hmm. that's not what that's Mm -hmm. going to do. Mm -hmm. I do find pastors that then get anxious and nervous. And so they. They speak either with more detail or louder, but they're saying similar things. Yeah. And they're surprised that doesn't produce what they were hoping for in their young college son or daughter or even young pastor. Yeah. Who's going, wait a minute, something here isn't lining up for me. And of course, the deconstruction takes different forms. Yours is interesting in the academic space. What, What do you talk to? students about folks that you're interacting with as they start to have those questions? I mean, at the risk of repeating myself, like no, I, I really do. think in Say part, it again. It, it's, it's that sort of like, like the question is not a problem. Yeah, The question is not a problem. Mm. The question is actually the answer, right? Jesus in, in, in the gospel of Mark, mm-hmm. he gives the, the parable of the sower. And then maybe even more importantly, People stick around afterwards and they come and say, well, we what don't get was it. that? Right. Right, right, right. And, and Jesus tells them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom. What is the secret of the kingdom? The only thing, the only thing that holds that group of people, because it's not just the 12, it's mm-hmm. those, the 12 and those who are around. Mm-hmm. The only thing that those people have in common with, another, with one another is they stuck around afterwards to ask their question. Yes. I think there's a decent case to be made that that is the secret of the kingdom. Yeah. And actually Jesus goes on then to explain the mm-hmm. purpose of par- parables. And he says, basically, the purpose of parables is to confuse you. Yes. That's the goal. That's not a bug. It's a feature. Well, because, and he does this crazy thing where he says, imagine if you spoke clearly. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the weirdest things. Imagine if you spoke clearly. They would understand. Yeah. And like, wow, that would be awful, wouldn't it? Well, watch, watch what happens in the gospel of Mark when people understand, mm. right? Like who are the people who say they know who Jesus is? It's like the demons, Peter, right before he gets called Satan, like the, the centurion who kills him. Like all, all, everybody else in the gospel of Mark, like all the people you might want to emulate, <laughs> yeah. they're asking questions. They're amazed. They're like, who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him, right? Like Peter's mo- the most dangerous place Peter ever gets in the gospel of Mark is when he confesses you are the Messiah. Because mm. right at that moment, he thinks that by getting the answer right, and of course you got it, you got it right. That's the right answer. Yes. It's nothing more dangerous in life with God than, than thinking mm. you've got the right answer, than even having the right answer. Mm. Because the right answer can get, can make you think, all right, well, good. I'm done with God. I, yeah. I figured it out. Solved. Now, 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 now I'm right. Cause then what turns around right, right then Peter says, mm. well, then I, I know, uh, if you hadn't heard Jesus, you're the Messiah suffering, dying. On yeah, the we're cross. not doing that's, that. We're not. That's yeah. remember, I got the right answer. Yes. I know how this goes. I know right. what a Messiah is. Mm. 
and, and, and so the, the questions are not, they're not a problem. Mm. They, again, they are the substance of relationship. And so if our, our goal, you know, it's sort of like, imagine someone coming to you and you know, like, <laughs> I need help with my marriage. Like uh, I, I keep, we keep asking one another questions, you know, yeah. like, I don't know what time my wife's going to pick my daughter up from school. <laughs> like, and that's really, you know, right. I think that's the end. I think we're done. Right. right? It's like, no, no, we're asking questions. We're right. in relationship. Yes. We have common concerns and yeah. we're like in one another's lives. And so, I mean, sometimes we even have big questions and those can mm. be frightening, yes. but they're also, they're also the substance of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, you know, the, the, the thing that's going to drive, and this is not everyone, right? Because many people's deconstruction happens for other sorts of reasons, but, totally. but for this sort of person, right? I think the thing that's going to drive them away most <laughs> is to, is to get the impression that church is not, is not a place where questions are yeah, safe. They've learned to not do that. Right. And if, and if instead our response can mm. be, uh, and this is the response, you know, response that gives the students constantly mm. is again, it's just like, that's a really good question. Mm. Who are you asking? Like, are you shaking your fist at the sky mm -hmm. over that question? Are you asking, you know, are you asking the New York Times that question? Mm -hmm. Are you asking Twitter that question? Mm. Are you are you asking Jesus that question? Yeah. Because I think actually, again, the questions aren't aren't the problem. Yeah. They're also not the solution. Right. Only but the, the real question is who are you asking the questions? Yeah. And if you're gonna let your questions lead you into life with Jesus, mm. then I mean then that's great. A lot more of questions. good roads there. Lots more questions, of good roads. more yeah. assurance we're that's gonna find right. our way through, right? And yes. I, I think that what Jesus says about the parables is actually true of life. I think life is a parable. Mm. And it's sort of set up or at least a feature of the way it works, especially mm -hmm. in like in a fallen world, is it just doesn't make sense. Mm. It it it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. Why do good things happen to bad people? Why mm -hmm. you know what's what's happening in this country or with hungry people or whatever it might be? What's right. what's going on with this? It doesn't make sense. Right. And those questions again oughtn't be threats to us. Those questions I think are there yeah. so that we will get confused, and that by God's grace. Some yeah. of us, we might take those questions to Jesus mm -hmm. and find and find life and relationship and conversation with him there. Yeah. And I think what I appreciate what you're saying is pastors can learn to be more comfortable in those environments with the people they lead. You can, I think that is something you can learn. Yeah. But often pastors aren't trained to be familiar with that experience. They're trained to have answers. I mean, there was the great radio show, The Bible Answer Man, right? So yeah. we're trained to be the kinds of people that if we read enough books, we have enough thoughts, our main job is to just give answers quickly to questions. I think one of the gifts I've found in the academy, and there are lots of bad things mm -hmm. <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure, sure going on, right? But I think one of the gifts I've found hanging around Yale as long as I've hung around Yale mm. is that there's this sort of... Um, there's this thought that like, that maybe one vision, mm -hmm. I've got this in part from someone like Willie, Willie James Jennings, my colleague at the Divinity School. Maybe what it looks like to be like a well-formed, mature, intellectual person. You can drop out the intellectual part if you want, but mm -hmm. you know, a well-formed, mature person is not to be someone who thinks they have all the answers, yeah. but to be someone who knows how to how to ask good questions, or even mm -hmm. maybe more importantly than that, how to sit with somebody else's question, sit yeah. with somebody else in their questions. Yeah, I think so much of so much of my mm. work is that right. Mm -hmm. Help me understand your question. What's at stake for you in that? Where did that come from? What just what you do with this podcast? Help mm -hmm. me understand your story a little bit mm -hmm. more to to understand what's yeah why that's and, important to you. Or... And, and look, you're a human being, so you are right. going to remain forever a mystery to me. Like mm -hmm. I cannot comprehend you. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. You know, that's just not, that's not how this thing works. Right. Yeah. But in this bottomless mystery that you mm -hmm. are as like a, a, a creature of God created in the image of God. Yeah. Can I, can we sit together in this? Because I, I believe God has something for you yeah. in, in this and probably for what it's worth, then Bob, God probably has something also for me yes. <laughs> in yes. being with you in this. Mm. And I think, at least in, in, in many places in the academy, I've actually found the further you go on that road, there can be at least yeah. <laughs> a sort of intellectual humility that finds its way in. 
mm. um, where, where I think fewer um, tenured faculty members at uh, Ivy League universities imagine themselves to be answer people <laughs> right? than maybe folks who aren't in those environments might imagine from yeah. the outside. No, that's true. Um, there's, a, there's a sort of sense of like, I mean, that's true in the science lab. Yes. Maybe especially right, right? Like, right. Sit down with a you know with a high energy particle physicist. You know, and they're going to tell you all they care about is what they don't know. Yeah, there's a lot. That's that's what they spend that all day we're trying with. to figure out. Right, we're not retreading what we know. That's right. that. No, the the the, that's the, totally. the game. The job is to to live with some mm -hmm. to live with some questions, figure out how to answer mm -hmm. better ones, and and live in the midst of them. And I think. That's actually, that can be a gift. And I, again, it's not to say that there isn't yeah, there's arrogance mess. that pops up. And sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And maybe even takes over. Right. <laughs> at totally. Times. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it can if you're there's smart. This other thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So let me ask, let me ask one more thing. Well, maybe it'll be more than one. So out of the work that you've done, which you should probably describe what you do right now, what your job title is and all the things you do, because it's amazing. You write beautiful things. You work with incredible people. But I thought might, what might be good as we finish is to talk a little about the class that you have around it's the good life, right? I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how that formed because what I find so cool about it is, I mean, you're, you're really serving students in a really beautiful way in a very important place to serve them. But I see how much your faith really informs that work for you. You know, the life that you have with Jesus drives you pastorally in that way is what I see. So, Tell a little bit about what you do, and yeah, sure. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, sure. So I, I work at the Yale Center for Faith and Culture yep. um, with Miroslav Volf, a theologian. If folks don't know him, that that that's probably the best thing you get out of this podcast. You should know you should him. Just, yeah. go, just <laughs> yeah. go read something, Miroslav. Go, go start go read, reading things. Yeah, read free of charge. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, so that's, that's a great privilege for which I am grateful mm -hmm. every day, a chance to think together with him, write together with yeah. him. Yeah. And, and as you say, also uh, do some teaching work. So I direct our undergraduate teaching program, which mm. is called Life Worth Living. Um, and we're asking, we're trying to help students, we're trying to equip them for the lifelong process of discerning the shape of flourishing life. Mm. What, what kind of life should I want for myself? What kind of life should I want for my communities, for the world, for young people that I care about? When I say I wanna do good in the world, what do I, what do I Based mean Based on what, that? right, like, yeah. yeah. Like what kind of- For like, whom, right. For whom, right. what would count as good? Yes. Um, what kind of world are we trying to bring about mm. or live into or receive or however we think about that? Yeah. So that's a, that's a, and we're doing that in a very pluralistic context, yeah. you know? So uh, we're reading, you know, utilitarians. We're reading, not this year, but often we're reading Nietzsche. Yeah. We're reading the gospels. We're reading the Hebrew Bible. We're reading mm. the Quran. Mm -hmm. We're reading the sutras of the Buddha. We're, you know, we're, we're in it. Mm. We're all in, and that's trying to meet the students sort of where, where they are. Cause they've got yeah, all what are these the paths? voices. What are the, what are the windows? What are the ways, the paradigms by which people exactly. tend to answer that question? Yeah, yeah. It seems like when it comes like life's biggest questions, mm -hmm. Mary Douglas said this, um, she's a social theorist that, we don't actually make most of the big decisions in our lives. We trust the systems that we live in, the traditions mm. we're a part of to make those decisions for us. Mm. And so maybe like the one big decision you get to make is with whom you want to ask these questions, what tradition, you know, how do you, where are you gonna locate yourself? And so that's, yeah, we're trying to help students sort of think through those questions for themselves mm. in light of what they might learn from those traditions. I tell students on the first day of class, you should know from the outset, I'm a Christian. Worse than that, I'm a Christian pastor. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like I, I, I can't pretend to be your neutral tour guide. Right. For it's worth, I have Christian, I have Christian reasons for mm -hmm. wanting this to be an open conversation. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have Christian reasons for wanting you to have freedom of conscience, right. and so I'm not here to proselytize you. Right. But I want to have a truth-seeking conversation about the substance of our like shared humanity, the worthiness of our shared humanity. Wow. And, and so, you know, I invite people to you, wherever you're coming from, and that's, can we just be, be our, bring our, bring our whole selves here mm -hmm. again, our, our, our intuitions, our hunches, our answers, maybe in the strongest sense, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. our, our questions as well. And mm -hmm. we're going to live with those together. And we take students on a, like a short, you know, just uh, not an overnight, but a, you know, day retreat uh, off campus mm. and we're telling each other's stories and yeah. we're, we're, we're in it, you know, and, um, well, how many kids when they sign up for Yale think they're doing that? 
Um, more and more, I imagine. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, now, I mean, a few years ago, I had my, so I also teach a first year seminar that's very much related to this. It's mm. like, you know, what kind of person do you want to become or do you feel called Dude, to become? And how's your college education going to help you become that person? I love that. Everybody's asking you what you want to accomplish. I don't, let's, let's spend some time thinking who about are who you, who you, who totally. are you going to be? And what kind of world do you want to live in? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and I, I had, I first time for a few, a few years ago, somebody came in and was like, oh, just so you know, like I, I came, I chose Yale because like wow. I, I came to visit and somebody invited me to a life worth living class. And so like, I'm here to do this. So like, this I'm is in, becoming, like, it's becoming story, sort of yeah. thing. But, um, well, I mean, in certain ways, I think this is part of like the American idea of college Yeah, is that it should be a place where we ask these big questions. And I think most often, you know, it happens at 2 a.m. under the influence of various substances totally, or whatever. Totally. And like, I, I don't want to yeah. displace that. I mean, yeah. maybe the substances, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, you're hanging out in some dorm somewhere. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. that's how that's trying happening. to impress it's, a girl or <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there's an acoustic guitar involved. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, <laughs> Maybe that was just me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're just trying to say, hey, you know, you know, if organic chemistry and the Russian novel or whatever are worth the best of your right. intellectual energies, yes. maybe like the purpose and shape of your entire life. <laughs> we should, should consider it. It's yeah. like worth that totally. same kind of energy. And right. So maybe it, we could even do this in the curriculum. We and could I have these conversations there. love what you're doing. The stuff I hear about it, you know, because I've been vicariously living through Caleb who's been <laughs> talking to you about these things. And we've talked here and there. I i don't know. I think partly from your influence, but then also reading Willard. Willard would talk about these four questions that everyone has to answer or whatever. And it has become the number one way I share my faith now. Yeah. It is the way I have conversations with people. I just say, what do you think? I just want to ask you a couple of questions in a row because you, you're asking me, what do I believe? Yeah. I'm really interested in what you believe. Yes. And what I believe will make sense once I understand what you believe. Like we will be able to do this together. Yeah. And I guess I'd want to know one, what do you think a good person is? What do you think the good life is? Like, what's it mean to have the good, like when you drive by someone, you point, you go, that guy's got the good life. Yeah. What is the good life? How does that make for, how do the first two questions make for like a good place or a good world? And then the last question I just want to ask is, how do you think it's going? How's the project oh, going? <laughs> like, it's, you know, however yeah, yeah, you think yeah. about all those yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You were here right now. How's it going? And my hunch is we're going to answer those questions differently. Yep. We might answer them the same way. <laughs> I don't know. It's possible. Yeah. And uh, then I think we'll be able to describe, for at least for me, why what my life with Jesus has to do yeah. with those things. Because, frankly, that's where... It's really interesting. Frankly, it's where the cross makes sense or the resurrection mm -hmm. or what it is to be in a church. You know, like all of those things, for me anyway, fall into those realities and ultimately a redemptive story of how I think God's doing that in the yeah. real world. Most people, when I ask these questions, have almost no answers. Yeah. Right? They just are Most freezing. Christians probably. Right. No, honestly, <laughs> exactly. it's, that's real. <laughs> I know. They just start freezing. They start going, well, I don't know. I think probably if you're sincere and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. tell me more about that. Yourself. Yeah. And then yeah. they're, but then they kind of, they're out of lines. So like literally somewhere around 30 seconds. They're like, and they're like family. <laughs> <laughs> but then they're like, community. I don't really like my family. Right, right, you know, right, I don't, yeah, yeah, totally right. So now that I say family, I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah. want to do that though. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, it'd be nice to have money, but. Probably not what it's That's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like probably not what life is for. <laughs> yeah, they're sort of embarrassed. I mean, right. And that happens That's for right. us, hopefully, yes. too. Right? We're, yes. So, look, C.S. Lewis has this great line when he says that maybe you'll have certain kinds of friendships in your life yeah. that are like, where you like share, you have like common cause, shared mm -hmm. interests. You sort of like join up and whatever, right. you know, and, and, and some, like includes like, frankly, co religionists yes. <laughs> in that. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's like, but then there's this other thing, right? These like deeper friends, mm -hmm. some group of people who, Together, shared together, share interest in some long neglected question. Mm. He said, "These people will be your your deepest friends. Yeah, they need not agree on the answers." Mm. And so, this sort of thought about that—that's that place of building friendship. Yeah, is to say, 
you and I, we share questions. Yeah. Right. That's, that's again, that, that's where we, that's what we share. Um, and then all of a sudden, again, if it's a truth seeking conversation about mm-hmm. a shared question, then like the asymmetry of like evangelism that always yes. honestly sort of, like it just felt gro- It just felt gross. Yeah. You know, like I had like some secret plot. I'm like pulling yeah. on my friends, like trying all my, to do something. Yeah. Too, like right? all of my friendships are fundamentally inauthentic. Cause right. I have like a, uh, like a trick I'm trying to pull, mm-hmm. but instead, no, it's like no secrets. It's all in the open. Yeah. Like I want to, I want to, I want to live into the worthiness of our shared humanity. Like yes. I want to, I want to live, I want to live the good life. I want to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. Whatever the shared language is, mm-hmm. right? We're trying to ask what this is. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to do that. You're trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Let's compare notes. Yeah. Like how's what, it, what, what and how's you, it going? What do you right? think? How's that going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you think that is? What questions do you have? Right. Like, how do you think it's going? Could we try to do some of that together? And I've had you just be shocked at the people where you find you're in common cause. And I, yes. I thought, I mean, for especially there was a season of my life when I was early on in doing this work when it was almost like God kept playing a joke on me. Like mm. no matter who I talked to, it would always come back to Jesus. And mm-hmm. I wasn't, I didn't have to bring Jesus into it. Totally. Right. It's like my Zen Buddhist friend, mm-hmm. he's actually speaking in front of my Yale class mm-hmm. and you know, he's getting asked a question about like compassion and, and some of the sutras that we had read and mm-hmm. the Theravada canon. And, and, you know, they're like, I don't, I don't really see much compassion in this, the student right. saying, and my Zen friend is like, you know what? Yeah. You know, when I did my MDiv or at Harvard or whatever, you know, I, I had to read that stuff, but Honestly, you know, if you, if you want to read a sacred text that talks about compassion, it's like I, to this day, it's like I can't read the gospels without weeping. Yeah. And when I think about the bodhisattva, the, the one who, for, who could leave this world, mm. but for the sake of compassion returns to it mm. to help others find uh, truth. I can't think of it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's that's who it is. Totally. And I'm like talking about I'm like Steve, dude. You don't understand. Like these kids, they know I'm a Christian. Yeah, they think they're gonna they think, think I think put you up this. To this. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I'm like I'm like you. Can you please go back and like make it clear that uh, I had no idea you were gonna say that, uh, right? But it's like, but he's <laughs> and, and so two I things are it. so. Like, one thing is I feel like the Lord is sort of like it was important for me early on mm-hmm. in this work for the Lord to be like, hey. I got this. I, I got this. Totally. Like I'm in this, right? Yeah. Like you're taking this risk. Yes. Or like I ended up, Jay, man, I ended up being basically like the like church planting consultant for like the secular humanist group in New Haven. Like it was weird. <laughs> they were like, I know it's like not really a church. You started stuff. How, how like, do we do this? this? Right. right? Like totally. you planted a church in New totally. Haven. Help me. You know? right. like, yeah. Could you totally. help me? I like, I, I was like, honestly, I have to pray about that. Yeah. And then I prayed and I, I felt, yeah, I felt released to do it. That you could do that would help people. I think right. be, and I think we have shared questions totally, and totally. common cause. <laughs> and then he was like, all right, come hang. Like, we're going to do this group. This you know, guy in our group wants to lead this group once a month. It's called WTF, <laughs> who to follow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was this guy who was like, who, who, who ended up writing this book ultimately. Mm. Um, Tom Crattenmaker wrote this mm. book, like um, Confessions of a Secular Jesus Follower, right? Wow. He's, like, he's, like, he's like, I don't think Jesus is God. I'm pretty sure Jesus isn't the son of God because I'm right. pretty sure there isn't a God. Right. But, but if I you're wanna, gonna follow somebody. You're gonna follow someone. This is the person you should follow. And it's the yeah. person I wanna follow. Am I allowed to do that? And, and so he convened this group like once wow. a month. And it was in the secular humanist space. And like, he kept inviting me I, and I kept showing up and like every, every month I'd be like, guys, we don't just have to talk about Jesus. Right. Like, like yeah. Like just because I'm here and like, no, it's not because you're here. It's like, we're actually interested we're in this very question. Very intrigued. Right. Like, Jesus is really compelling. It's really. Yeah. And so, I mean, first of all, let's just observe. That's how Jesus sends out the 70. Yeah. Not like, Hey, go recruit people to mm-hmm. come to the awesome, mm-hmm. you know, like we'll set it I'll you go out, I'll set up the, 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 the smoke <laughs> machine, the fog machine and the subwoofer. And by the time you get back, like it'll all be it'll set be up cracking. Right. And it'll yeah. be great. <laughs> right. Right. He sends them out to go be hosted by yeah. other people. Right. And so yeah. anyways, this is like sort of thing of like going mm-hmm. and like trusting God's work in the midst mm-hmm. of being hosted by others in their spaces. So, so that was, that was one thing it was that like God was just letting me know, like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I got this. I, I can be at work here. And the, the crazy thing is I'm showing up in these spaces and realizing like, dang it, Jay, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'd be willing to give up Jesus, the Bodhisattva as like part of my, I mean, mm. it ranks below everything I get out of the gospels. Let's make that clear. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm just saying like, there's something yeah. inside, there's something, like, I'm like, that's an earworm. 
Uh, that's not going to oh, get yeah. out, out of there for oh, me. Oh, that's powerful. I'm like, I'm never going to forget the testimony of mm-hmm. Steve, my Zen Buddhist yes. teacher friend, <laughs> yes. and his account of who Jesus was for him in, mm. his, in the language of his, yes. of his world. Yes. Right? Um, I and, cannot tell you how much I love And that's so this. rich, right? Oh, it's beyond Because now rich. it's going back and forth. And yes. I'm not out here dispensing answers. We're having a sort of common. Yes. Yeah, you get it. You get it. Well, I get it because I've been in a few rooms like you live in those rooms, but I get to like moonlight in rooms like that. And what I'm so struck by, and I'm hoping people hear, many pastors, Christians, nice Jesus follower types, you know, what they often think is, you know, I'm following Jesus, this is great for my life and blah, blah, blah. But then there's these other worlds where people are like really smart and... (laughs) They know how to answer questions. They do hard work on stuff. And and this kind of thing we do feels sort of like antiquated or boring or kind of sidelined by this freight train of intellectualism that just drives us into some kind of strange backward world that we live in. It's just so funny. The academy is not nearly as organized as a freight train. <laughs> like it is, it's just like, <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, but I mean, sorry, I'm just yeah. saying people are doing their normal life for yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. there's things happening at like a place like Yale mm. that, you know, at best they're praying like Jesus break in right to, you know, the, oh, through the iron. show up, man, Jay, they show up. Cause you know, I don't know if you've heard, but both great Ameri- great awakenings in the United States began on Yale's yes, campus. I know you, you wouldn't believe how many people I, are telling me for I, the first time. Right. Do you, you know, know this? Do you know this? Cause like, it's going to happen now <laughs> because of the speaker I'm bringing to campus. The thing. I mean, and again, well, you want to have faith? Like, of course, like, I well, why would, not? Would be amazing. The, let's would do be awesome. all that. Let's but pray. what, but let's what is yeah. always happening? I mean, always. Mm is God is already doing that. Yes, God's at work. And that's that's the whole thing, right? When you like go out in evangelism and you're like, oh, I'm going to go bring the gospel, right? And the, the Lord's <laughs> yes. like, oh, that's I'm, so cute. I'm already doing this. Like, I, I, I've Would been you like there. to join up with me? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's what I hear. So what, what I hope encourages people when they listen to you is this. First of all, that stuff's already happened. Second, there's humans like you who care about these environments have been given the gifts to do so and are called and equipped by God. And, you know, there's there's lots of people like you. And may there be many, many more. And here's where it gets even funnier. When people think about this kind of work, they might go, okay, yeah, that's true. There are some Christians there. They're definitely high church Presbyterians <laughs> or, 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 or like smells and or, bells or some Anglicans, yeah, yeah. maybe it, probably some Catholics, but there's some vineyard folks like kicking around in some of these yeah, academic yeah. institutions, teaching new Testament, come to like, SVS, meet them. Well, and that's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I just recently, I had a friend who's theologian say, well, we have this SVS thing and you should check it out. It would be great for you to come. And he looks at the lineup. He starts looking over the previous years and he's like, these are like real people. You know, I think, I think, you know, so this is even my good Christian friend is right, like, right. well, I, I mean, you vineyard guys, I, that's kind of cute. Yeah. I know you have this thing. We're playing you A-ball. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We, we still have day jobs, you know. But, like, right. yeah. but then when he reads through, he's like, wait a second. This is like serious. And they're crossing into the quote unquote secular institutional academic spaces. So it's not just you're living in some component of a seminary. You're actually doing work in sociology and in the sciences and in history and 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 yeah, be excited about what those folks are doing. Also just know those people are humans. Yes. And they just need to, they need to be loved and cared for. Yes. And the academia runs it yeah. runs it thrives on the energy mm. of anxiety mm. generated by bottomless yeah. senses of imposter syndrome yes and you know and and so yeah. it's like you know these these are these are folks who who just also need and that's what we found at the society of vineyard scholars is we yes. get together and and what does the lord want to do 
just wants us to pray for pray people. Pray for each other. Totally. Like, listen for words. Yeah. Share encouragement of the Lord. Yes. Share correction of the yeah. Lord. I mean, just like do the stuff. Yeah. You know? Yes. And so, yeah, I think these folks, you know, they, they may be a little bit more comfortable with questions than you are. And that can be a gift. Yes. But they're also... They're just, they're people who, well, and they who probably worry need, about their kids. That's what I was going to say. They need a meal in your home from time to time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they need, wonder if they're going to have a job next totally, year, you know, totally. when the state changes the university budget or whatever it yes, is, you that's know, right. and um, they're, they're just, they're people. Yeah. But I'm Part so, of the body. so grateful for you and the work that you do. I mean, you and I both got to ride alongside with Caleb as he was finishing his dissertation, his work yeah man uh, i mean when he finished i think i said out loud on accident we graduated uh, <laughs> because <laughs> we finally yeah. finished because because it's hard it is and there's any number of folks that could be listening to us going is this worth the rigmarole is it worth pushing all the way through this is or i don't know am i going to lose my faith if i am an academic of yeah. this sort of caliber and what encourages me to see the kind of work that you do, the work that Caleb has done, so many people that run SVS. And, you know, one of the things I pray for a lot, which we haven't gotten a chance to talk about yet, is what would it look like to have vineyards in all kinds of university uh, towns? Caleb's infected you with his dream. Oh, it is. It's well, your dream. Maybe it was my dream oh, that affected him, infected dude, you. Oh, my. He did not cite his source. <laughs> Academic <laughs> integrity fail. No, I think it's something the Lord's it's giving shared. us grace to do. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, 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 I really do. And people like you show us the way through. So I really appreciate you making time. And the only rule is, you have to be willing to talk to me again sometime. Do you, you, you promise? I can't. I oh, I promise. All right, because we could do hours and hours on all the things that you've written about. I'm in. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. The We Are Vineyard podcast is a production from the team at Vineyard USA. If you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. Leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Connect with us online for additional resources. Our website is vineyardusa.org. And we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at at VineyardUSA. Thanks for listening. See you next week.